time I was faced with having to help a white farmer save his farm, he, he took a long time talking, but he was trying to show me he was superior to me. I knew what he was doing, but he had to come to me for help. What he didn't know while he was taking all that time trying to show me he was superior to me was I was trying to decide just how much help I was going to give him. All right, well, that's from last week. The uh, black lady civil servant in the Department of Agra was fired, now maybe rehired. Uh, as a result of the tapes that which came out and uh, in which she was speaking to the NAACP. And, of course, the man who released the tapes is a man who brought down ACORN, rightly so, because ACORN is a corrupt organization involved in all sorts of bad dealing, in my opinion, uh, that keeps electing radical leftists that have undermined this, uh, this incredible republic of ours. And so joining us right now is Andrew Breitbart. Andrew, welcome to the Savage Nation. I want to say thank you for coming uh, on the show because I know you've been sort of... Uh, in the retreat oh i it was an intentional uh ploy to get out of the media let shirley uh speak because the more shirley sherrod speaks the more people realize that she's not the saint that cnn and the rest of the mainstream media tried to portray her to be but let it be known to your audience uh this was never about shirley sherrod there's a major context to this story uh, that even Shirley Sherrod on day one when she was fired, she understood she uh, was caught between uh, the crossfire between the Tea Party and the NAACP, which was uh, trying to make uh, you know six days of the mainstream media allowing for the NAACP to say, is the Tea Party racist, is an act of propaganda, an act of negatively branding the Tea Party intentionally. Right, and right. it's like saying, have you stopped beating your wife? Of course that's how it's been set up. Look, Andrew, you and the Tea Parties, and Drudge, and Michael Savage, and a few others stand between us and the deluge, be between the nation falling into in, off the cliff. We know that. And so they're in full mode attacking you. Andrew, I have to ask a question because no one has asked it. You said to the New York Times you did not edit those tapes. Is that correct? No, I had, I, what I did was I found out about these videos, uh, or this video, uh, back in April, and I got a tip in the email from a guy down down in um, Georgia who I said I would have nothing to do with. He didn't want anything to do with exposing himself as another Joe the plumber. And so I said I'd protect him, and he sent me uh, a, the, a video uh, in, in the form of a DVD back in April, maybe, maybe mid to late April. And once I got it, I put it into my computer, and it didn't show up. I went to a computer expert. It didn't show up. And I sort of dropped the ball on it, and I didn't really think at the time that it was that big of a story. I mean, you know, the NAACP expressing racism is hardly uh, newsworthy in 2010. It's sort of their raison d'etre. Yes, that's uh, right. So I, I dropped the ball, as it were. And when I saw on Tuesday of last week or two weeks ago, Ben Jealous, begin this propaganda campaign, I said, okay, well, that's just typical, and this is the White House using the NAACP as a proxy uh, to act as a, an instigator of a, a, a race battle, um, a very cynical race battle that's based upon faulty evidence. The centerpiece of the NAACP's campaign is that the N-word was hurled at uh, three black congressmen, and I've proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that that didn't happen. The secondary evidence that they used is lowering the threshold for an organization to have to uh, explain away racism to perhaps an aberrant sign in Tallahassee that the whole group has to respond to. And so when they made the reaction of the audience of the Tea Party, um, that that was the deplorable act that defined the Tea Party as racism, and that ABC, CBS, and NBC, and CNN, and the New York Times allowed for the NAACP to spend six full days to negatively brand the Tea Party as racist, I called that guy up and I said, hey, you remember that video uh, that you talked about? I think it actually has some pertinence to what's going on in the news cycle right now, and I need to get it out there as soon as humanly possible because when I proved with four videos that showed that the, endo that the N-word wasn't said at the Capitol steps, all the media outlets that I went to and begged for them to show it said, well, that's not newsworthy anymore. That was two or three news cycles ago. Oh. So I recognized that I had to get the video up that showed that the audience acquiesced 
Dr. Shirley Sherrod's racist narrative, and he sent me two videos, and I granted her the exculpatory narrative that the media claims that I edited out. Let me read for you the part of the piece that talks about, this is a piece that talks about how this is about the NAACP, not about Shirley Sherrod, but let me describe But, but Andrew, hold on, Andrew Breitbart, this is very important. This is the crux of the entire issue. So you asked for the guy again to send you the same exact videos. He sent them to you in the edited form? So he had sent me the full thing. It's impossible to transfer over this massive, massive, massive file of a 45-minute thing. So I asked him to cut, to cut uh, the pertinent information. This is what he sent me. And in the actual video, you will see at the very end, she said, this is not about race. This is about uh, black versus uh, white. And in my piece, this is what they will not grant. My piece, I write this. In the first video, Sherrod describes how she racially discriminates against a white farmer. She describes how she is torn over how much she will choose to help him. And she admits that she doesn't do everything she can for him because he is white. Eventually, her basic humanity informs that this white man is poor and needs help, but she decides that he should get help from one of his kind. She refers him to a white lawyer. Sherrod's racist tale is received by the NAACP audience with nodding approval and murmurs of recognition and agreement, hardly the behavior of the group now holding itself up as the supreme judge of another group's racial tolerance. Now, you wrote that, Andrew. Has that been published yet? That was in the original piece that I wrote. Well, that's not being heard by many people today, is it? Of course it isn't. Of course it isn't being heard. because. And you know who, who was on my side at the very beginning? Surely no. Shred. The first day when she was thrown under the bus, she came back to the media and said that she was harassed by the White House by the side of the road, she said, you need to look at the whole context, and they refused to listen, and they fired her. It was she who said that she got caught between the NAACP and the Tea Party. Now, when she goes to the White House, or she talks to the president, and she talks to the White House, this woman who recognized that it wasn't about her, that it wasn't about, uh, that it was about the NAACP's uh, situation uh, against the Tea Party, uh, she goes to the White House. She gets a job back, not her original job, which is curious, and we can get back to that. Shirley Sherrod now becomes, like the NAACP and like the Congressional Black Caucus, a weaponized proxy against the Tea Party, against Fox News, and against Andrew Breitbart. Have we seen this over and over and over again? They got to her, and she spent the next three days burying herself, calling me a racist, saying that I want to go back to slave days. She was not saying this on Monday and Tuesday before she talked to the White House. The White House is using race to split this country apart. It's not just me who says this, Michael. Listen to this one. Mary Frances Berry, the Clinton and Carter appointee uh, of the Civil Rights Commission, said last week in Politico, she said, this is the Democratic Party's strategy. The Republican Party and the Tea Party are, are no more racist than the average American. This is the Democratic Party's strategy to have the opposition have to answer the question, are you a racist, instead of having to deal with economic questions such as joblessness and unemployment. Mm -hmm, she mm -hmm. But, Andrew, I hear you. I agree with you, by the way, 100%. I know that this administration specializes in racial enmity. I've said the same thing for months. I've said that it's the most racially divisive administration in history. They've divided the nation more so than any I've seen in my lifetime. Uh, I understand all of that. Unfortunately, you got caught in the crosshairs, but I really want to go back to one thing and one thing only, because it's, to me, in your defense, if you wish, wish not to answer it, Andrew, I'm going to let it go. The tape you ran, was that an edited tape, and who edited it? The guy in, uh, in Georgia edited it, and at the end of the tape, it says it offers the beginning of her exculpatory story. If you read beyond that... Yeah, but, Andrew, I'll tell you what I think, and I said it on the radio, or I wouldn't repeat it right now. First of all, I said you're my friend. That's number one, and I say it again. I let, let the chips fall where they may, Andrew. I'm that kind of personality. I'm not going to now shift gears and say, well, or, and not take a position. I'm not Shep Smith of Fox News. I'm not O'Reilly and I'm not Hannity. I'm your friend, Andrew. 
And so what I'm worried about here is this, and I said it last week, Andrew, and I'll say it right on the air for as many hundreds of thousands of millions that will hear me. I think that the government itself sent that tape to you through the so-called man in Georgia and that you published it quickly and that they knew this would happen. I think that the handwriting of Rahm Emanuel in the White House is all over this affair. I'm not saying you're gullible. I am saying that they set you up said that, but I'm just going to have to agree to disagree with you. I do not believe that. I have many reasons to understand that that's not the case. That is that that starts sending people down the wrong uh, uh, gopher hole. That is not what happened. The story stands on its own uh, right now. Uh, I, the exculpatory information is in there. The, if, 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 he want, if, if this individual wanted to uh, make it about a, 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 an erroneously cut video I asked him to send me the pertinent stuff, and he keeps in the part where she says it's not just about race and it's 